Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Good afternoon, I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, where we film at the Cablevision Alt-T Studios in Hopog, New York. Uh, people who watch the show know that I do, I, I do quite a few shows on politics, and although sometimes I, I do think that they're a little bit boring, um, but they're a necessary evil, you know, and in <laughs> fact in my uh, my quest for justice and for legal reform, I got more involved in politics than I would like, and it's a very frustrating thing. But doing that, I also noticed that I give people, politicians are a special kind of person. You know, when people get into it, almost all the time, they're getting into it for the right reasons. They're getting into it because they want to make a change. The difference is once they get in, many of them, unfortunately, sadly, get, uh, get corrupted. And it's hard to tell going into it who's going to be. But I will say people who are running are doing it for the right reasons, and especially in a position like this where they're running for a town board, which is you know sort of a thankless job. You work hard. You know, it's not a high-profile thing. So I give uh, Amy a lot of credit for, uh, for at least running for office and putting her, putting her, uh, her hat in the race. And it's, you know, I did it myself, and I, I know it's not an I easy thing. I think I feel about politics like you do. <laughs> so, so it's necessarily, so welcome That's to the program. Evil, yeah. <laughs> Let me just give a little bit of a, a background, and because we're low budget here, we don't have teleprompters, so I am going to read it. Amy Fortunato announced that she'll run for candidate for Smithtown Town Council in the November 2018 special election. Special election because one of the town board members ended up running for supervisor. Ed Wareheim, great guy, doing a great job from what I could see so far, and now he is the supervisor so the balance of his term is left open which I believe so that would be a year a year long term, term yes. instead of the four years her bold vision administrative skills and fiscally conservative perspective represent the vital assets that Amy will bring to the town board Amy and her husband Joe brought their first home together in Smithtown in 1990 the Fortunatos have raised their three raised their three children and two grandchildren there Amy is a successful community leader and pastor with a master's degree from New York Theological Seminary and a former city bank manager with a bachelor's degree in marketing. So that's a pretty, uh, and, I, and I edited this down as I always do because I really don't like uh, reading everything. So she's got a nice background, interesting background, and I better watch my language uh, because I got a pastor sitting next to me. So first, Amy, uh, welcome again to Thank Long Island Backstory. Thank you for coming here. out. Thank and because you. you've not been in politics before, you know, it can be nerve wracking because you have no idea what I'm going to ask you, but I'll try not to uh, embarrass either one of us. So first of all, tell us a little bit, who is Amy Fortunato? Uh, we know you're from you're, you live in Smithtown. Tell us where you're from. Give us a little bit of background I grew on yourself. Up on Long Island, actually, I grew up in Freeport, um, and uh, my husband and I met at Citibank, um, and uh, fell in love, and we bought this uh, broken-down house in Smithtown. He's a structural engineer, and he uh, really renovated the whole house. How I allowed myself to have three little kids while he's fixing and doing, uh, I don't know, but uh, somehow we made it through. And since then, now I have two little grandchildren, although, you know, I'm like too young to be a grandmother, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I lo Smithtown is a beautiful, beautiful town. It is lovely. Uh, what I made you pick Smithtown? Uh, well, that's where he grew up. He okay. actually, he's a longtime Smithtown resident. He grew up in St. James, and uh, his dad built a house on River Road, and it's lovely, and it's still there, and it is, I I've always Road. been, yeah, <laughs> I've always been uh, drawn to it, so it's just lovely. So you decided to move all the way out east from, free, from, right. from Freeport. That is right, out in the sticks. Okay. Have you ever been, uh, have you ever been involved in politics before? I have not. I ran last year, I was asked to run. Um, uh, if you want, I, I just would say that I got involved in my community uh, about a land use issue. The only reason why I was even pulled into it was because uh, there was a situation. Uh, uh, there's property across the street from my home, the uh, Smithtown um, Schools Administration field, and then that building was all of a sudden going to be uh, developed into apartments, and the sewer treatment plant was going to be there. My neighbors. Uh, informed me and we organized, we started a petition, we started attending all the school board meetings, started attending town board meetings, and we were successful. We uh, spoke up and we were heard. So from there, um, I uh, decided that, well, I didn't decide. Actually, someone asked me to become <laughs> involved and would I consider running. Because they saw that you were out there speaking and getting involved, and they said, we got another sucker here. Yes, so, I, I'm <laughs> that sure That we can that's suck and pull I'm into sure this. I'm sure that's how that <laughs> went. <laughs> and they said, she's well-spoken, she's intelligent, we'll, oh, we'll bring her in. That's lovely. <laughs> and you said uh, and you said yes. I you, will try. <laughs> you give it a try. And we should say that you're, that you're uh, on, on the Democratic Party yes. running in a majority Republican uh, town. Yeah. 
Yeah, so but we're not all Republicans in Smithtown. We're, you know, there's plenty of us Democrats available and undecideds, and you know, we still all want to be heard. I think it would be great if we could have a little more balance on the town board and, and have a d diversity there. When it comes to local issues, do you think there's a difference? I know nationally there's a difference, you know, whether you're talking about abortion, you're talking about gun control, we're talking about the death penalty. There's pretty much a, there's a big difference between Democrat and Republican. But when it comes to town issues, do, do you think there's a difference in philosophies between a Democrat I, and a Republican? I, I agree with you. That's an interesting point. I think that there's less of those, you know, um, high stake issues that uh, come to the town board. That is not really issues that are discussed in town board meetings. It's, it's mostly land use issues. It's mostly, you know, community based, uh, you know, uh, issues that occur. So I think that. Um, you know, more of a check and balance, more of a, you know, let's hear the other side, let's let's listen in to what the community is interested in, is, uh, would be the function that I'd hope to do. And I think there's something to be said for a town that, let's just say the numbers are 30 to 40 percent, is Democrat or undecided. But if they have no nobody in their party on the board, they're really not being represented. Now, of course, every, they're supposed to look out for the, everybody's best interest, mm. but there are issues with, you know, party leaders mm. controlling it. So. You know, I, I always think there's a good thing. You know, we always think about it in the uh, in national elections, right? right? You know, we want to have you know either Republican or Democrat Senate in the Congress. We don't want to have everybody on the same on the same side for the right. most. But we want to check a, a check and balance for right. that. No. So, but even if somebody says, "Well, listen, I don't really like voting for a Democrat," if they like what you believe in, right? That would you know, be great. That, then they could uh, give you a chance. So, at the time that you did this, did you think that the Smithtown Town Board was looking out for your best interests? Uh, I, I think that the town board was not actually um, engaged with what the community was interested in. So that's how I, you know, kind of got so much involved. Um, as a matter of fact, a Republican neighbor is the one that came to me and said, listen, Amy, we don't want this to go up across the street. Oh, okay. So, you know, it was... Doesn't matter, Democrat or Republican, it, it, it's not good, it's not good. Right. We <laughs> sure, yeah, we sure just didn't want, you know, like overbuilding or overdevelopment without some say. Without And, and we know, you know, there's needs for, um, you know, certain housing and, 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 you know, some development, but we wanted to be part of the, of the conversation and to be in, involved. So there was a disconnect, I think, and with our group getting involved, uh, we ha were heard, and you know we were successful just to be uh, uh, heard and uh, considered, rather than you know just as if we were not there. Right. So I, I did a little bit of research on you be before the show, so that I was prepared. So I you're knew what great. to talk about you're and, and know what you're going to do. And I, and I took down some issues from your Facebook page, your website, your Palm Card, and I'm just going to go through some of the issues. You had a lot more issues, <laughs> which actually, you know, hey, for a town candidate, you had a lot of uh, <laughs> you know, issues. issues that had, uh, but you, that you were all issues, I say, things that concern you. So let me just go through them and do a minute or two on Thank each one you. and tell me your position. The first one is uh, land development. So we, we know we want smart growth. We know we want, you know, development. And there may be like a learning curve for people in Smithtown. Mostly Smithtown is, uh, you know, single family residents. But if we need to have multiple use housing or, you know, we, if we need, you know, other types of housing, we need to all be you know informed and I think that you know we want to have something to, to say about development. Now when we talk about you know multiple use housing sometimes people say well she's a Democrat that's a code word for low income housing. <laughs> is that what would you what, is that what you're talking about that you want to have low income housing in I think that Smithtown? Smithtown yeah I think it's um, I think we need affordable housing for our young people. It's a difference I, between low income and affordable. Absolutely so we hear from you know constituents, I when I go out to meet people or whatever the events are, you know we want our young people to be able to stay in Smithtown, so yeah. they need affordable housing. So that may be. They something. live in their parents' basement. What are you talking about? I what know. Do they, what do they need that oh, for? Boy, if I have another <laughs> parent basement, yeah. so we want we want them to be able to you know. Graduate. So there's sort of a fine line there between yeah, you know uh, having you know whatever's low income. And listen, I believe we need low income housing. You know, we need it somewhere, yeah. but w but where is right. is always the question. Right. And I always use the analogy. Listen, I love Lloyd Harbor. I would love for them to be able to make a home in Lloyd Harbor that I can afford. I just can't afford to live in Lloyd right. Harbor. I know. You know, I so didn't start in Smithtown either. You, I didn't. You know. You know, there's so there's you know there's, there's definitely a fine line that we do. This is something that I know is very important to you and and to me is uh, opioid addiction and. The resources available and uh, you know I've been to a couple of the debates that they had last year and I'm not sure what what is the town's role 
in, in combating opioid addiction and, and, and giving it resources? Or is this a county issue, a state issue? What, what is the town's role? It's all of it's all of that. Uh, what's interesting is I was able to attend the HOPOG PTA meeting, and Horizons is a um, resource right in Smithtown that uh, they are offering uh, to uh, have like early education with students and and to build those skills so that uh, young people can avoid can can you know turn down can you know have those uh, behavioral skills or their mental skills to get out of situations where they're offered uh, you know uh, illegal drugs or you know or, or drinking before their before their age is this like scared straight like we used to have or yeah, dare I've heard or of that. Uh, I don't think that's worked I think uh -huh. that we need like a different approach and I think horizon and there's other, I think, uh, agencies. And that's so Horizons is a town is a town program. It's uh, run by Suffolk County, as far as I know. Okay. Yeah, and they were just very willing to be involved with uh, early education and and to start before you know high school. It's it's a thing that's already happened. But if you which they've said, you know, we yeah. have we have to start early because what we're doing. Because, yeah, something's is, not working. Is, so let's not, not work. Right, let's it's not, not do the same. So so what is so well, what is the role of the town though? I mean, so we know Horizons is a good program. You know, does the town have any responsibility? for this? I think that we could um, uh, highlight it more, feature it more, make it, uh, you know, work with the school boards, work with Horizons, be a liaison to uh, introduce it more frequently and re recommend it more. Hopefully, you know, again, uh, get people up to speed. Uh, I know we don't want to think that our kids could possibly be, you know, tempted, but um, if parents are warned or, or educated about these issues, then maybe they're be more willing to hear about it at an earlier age. And what about uh, this is some, anybody who's watching the show lives in Smithtown? I don't even say anybody who's driven through freaking Smithtown. Yeah. We know about the <laughs> bottleneck, which is the traffic. Right, right, right. But what can be done? I think there must be some opportunity for a more, uh, another traffic study that helps us figure out timing, figure out even the, the apps on our, our phones, uh, you know, people uh, can know where traffic is like, you know, tied up. I think that there's more ways to uh, to identify, tra you know, to, to help us work out the traffic situation or, you know, even, you know, recommending people use the bypass or use different avenues. I I know it's it's a, a, a regular, I could, took me 20 minutes to get yeah, through it's town. It's frustrating. Yeah, yeah, so I think that there's ways that we can uh, work with, uh, you know. I mean, uh, we can't widen Main Street because <laughs> the buildings are both sides. So, right, that's right. You that's know, right. but so, uh, you know. They, so I think the timing on the lights, I think the, uh, uh, the uh, amount of uh, people uh, using the, the roadways, we, we have to, even when it comes to development, if we're overdeveloped, that means more cars. Right. Can we absorb that? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So that's got to be part of the consideration even the, around development. Now, this is something for years, and every time uh, our old supervisor, Pat Vecchio, ran, everybody would come to the meetings and the debates, and everybody would say, well, Smithtown has no master plan. You need a master plan for Smithtown. I don't know if we have one now. We don't have one. We're working on one. But you mentioned a master plan. So tell us what it is, why we need it, and is there one? Where, where are we at with this master plan? So there is a draft online. It's never been approved. There's never been any like uh, community input. So my thoughts are always that we need community engagement. I know that right now there is a, um, a request for uh, RFPO for a um, purchase uh, for a. Um, for a company to uh, come in and to do that big work, and it's a it's a large effort. And at least that company, uh, the uh, request for purchase, uh, the it has in inside of it the uh, the issue saying we need to hear from the community before we develop a town plan. I think uh, so. Uh, I think it's uh, Benjamin Franklin that said, "If you uh, fail to plan, you're planning to fail." So we need uh, you know uh, an overall plan. We need all of the hamlets, all of the villages in Smithtown to to be on board to have a, either a quality or a character a, and to know what this community wants. Right. So what one of the which brings me to the next thing which was uh, you wanted to establish uh, a citizens advisory board. And I don't know if we did it. I know in the last election there was talk about I don't remember who spoke about it, but uh, maybe it was the supervisor yeah, now, yeah. Ed Wareham, that we need to have uh, the city, and maybe, maybe there is more feedback, I, I don't know. Um, I ask about it a lot when I do get to the town council meetings. Um, 
I think it would be great if we did you know, uh, pull from the community. It could be the civics, it could be the chambers. There's many organizations that we could. Well, even some of the tanks, it's so easy now. You could put a poll up on a website. Absolutely. And There's send it right. out to Smithtown residents. Hey, what do you guys think about this? Right, absolutely. There's, a poll is the right way. To, you know? uh, it's, it's so easy. And But there's plenty of people in Smithtown that don't use social media or, you know, they don't even use their whatever. There's but people in the world that don't use Facebook. I know, Are you kidding? Oh, I my know. God. I've heard of them. Yeah. So we've got to reach out to them too. <laughs> <laughs> so a citizen's advisory board, I think, would be a great um, asset to the town and a, and a great um, uh, part of uh, the, the governing body. So is there not enough you know, I mean, I'm not that involved in, in town politics, so I don't know. I do watch Channel 18, oh. and I watch the board meetings, but I see the same people come up all the time, the activists that have an issue with the animal shelter, mm. with the traffic, one of the board members. Mm. But are the, uh, overall, is, is it just that there's apathy or we're not invited to come in? Or do you think Smith has, has a lot of uh, in, involvement from, I, or we're just so busy in our daily lives? I appreciate They're, your question. We are very busy in our everyday lives. I think that the, um, the meetings are actually, could be more, User friendly could be more explanative, you know, more uh, easier to understand. So sometimes when you're sitting there, we kind of joke and, and nudge each other. Oh, you know, your your house just got sold. We, we sometimes don't know what's going on in as they read the agenda. So you have to do a little bit of uh, background research, and that and the agenda only comes out two days prior. So. All I can say is I think that there's a, a, a friendlier, uh, more engaging way to do to run town business. And, and I'm and I'm going to go back to a a, a, uh, a quote that you that you made uh, in one of your press releases, uh, and you said uh, it's too easy for us to bring our own biases and partisan opinions into a conversation, preventing us from effectively hearing another person's concerns. I plan to approach this position with an unbiased ear endeavoring to listen to all points of view. And I said, I, I think that the prior to that, you said you got a lot of that from your seminary training. It, yeah, chaplaincy, seminary training, the, the, the thing that was the most practical thing that came away after, you know, 90 credits, uh, listening to another person, and you, you must do your best not to interject, you must do your best just to listen and be present. So if I learned anything at seminary, it seems like that was it. And if we can hear from each other, you know, no matter what diversity, no matter what, you know, however we feel about an issue, if we're at least listening and present, the other person feels heard, feels, and, and things may not go their way, but at least there's been the opportunity to express themselves. Except when that beep goes at their two minute time frame is <laughs> up. How do you how do you I express know. in two minutes? I know. But that's whatever a the little, time frame the thing starts crunchy. beeping. Yeah, that's a little crunchy. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about transparency. That's one of the things that, that you mentioned was transparency. You know, I see as we're getting better than we used to be. We published the meet you know, the meetings are televised, I think makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, that's um, right. Just in people's behavior and the way you treat other people. I, but what yeah. else do you have to say about uh, transparency? I think, again, that is part of even that um, way of approaching uh, doing business in town so that others can understand what's happening. If I'm transparent, I may have to explain a little bit more to you and the, and the, the language I use, I even in the agenda, could be clearer, could be uh, more uh, down to earth. Right. So now let's talk about cell service. And my sister lives in the western part of Smithtown, north of 25, and it drives me crazy <laughs> because, as you know, most a lot of people now are getting rid of their house phones and just using their cell phones. Right. But I can't reach her I because know. half the it's all gargled up, and I don't know if she just doesn't want to talk to me or if I'm really <laughs> getting uh, cut off. But you mentioned cell service, but of course nobody wants a tower in their backyard because right, right, we don't right. want to get brain cancer. Right. Uh, so you know, what, what, what can we do about cell? And there's, I, I think something going on right now. They're trying yeah, to put it. Put a tower there in. are cell towers. There are cell towers throughout Smithtown, and there's repeaters. And we, what we need, I think, with the idea of a comprehensive master plan or a you know master plan, I think that needs to be taken into consideration. That's important. I mean, yeah. I joked about it, but it, I oh, think it's important to absolutely, have absolutely, uh, absolutely. Even just you know financially, people are getting rid of their phones. Right. So and even you know the safety issues. If you if I have a breakdown, I want to be able to get through and you know call whoever to, to help me with my car, whatever it is. So we do need, and that needs to be reviewed, and that and and the 
coverage needs to be reviewed and how it gets done. Again, if we can reach out to the community, say, everybody, we, we do need this. It, it's, it's a necessary evil right. that we've got to address and figure out the best uh, system, the best methods. Right. What about the uh, historic landmarks? And we have a lot, a lot of historic landmarks yeah, in Smithtown. Yeah, yeah. So I think it would just add more charm if we uh, put more energies and efforts into it. I love the historic society. I get to volunteer there. But uh, right in my ha neighborhood, there's the Arthur House and there's the Caleb Smith House. There's other, you know, locations that could use um, our attention and our energy. We don't want to lose the uh, our past. Uh, George Washington, uh, you know, rode his horse through Smith town along 25A and right in front of this particular house. So we don't want to uh, ignore or let them become dilapidated. We want to highlight them and feature them because I think that adds charm to a town. I think yeah, that makes us look interesting. Yeah, and, and, I, and I have to say, you know, living in Smithtown, I probably even know, don't even know half of them. I don't think we do enough of a job promoting right. what we have in the Signage, town. Right, right. And if there was more things promoting it, people would care more about preserving them and building it. Because it really is amazing. I mean, like I've lived in Smithtown for uh, over 20 years now and still be, oh, do you know about this? No, I have no idea where that is. You know, I only know the, you know, the the the, the brush barn and nice. you know a couple yep. of the you know historic landmarks. And when you go, like, wow, this is beautiful yeah. in our own town. So we do have a lot to offer. Mm. Um, what about a downtown revitalization? Yeah. Because that is a problem that oh, we're starting to. Yeah, so Smithtown Moms, even today, was, and, and they hit all areas. They hit Kings Park, they hit downtown Smithtown, and they hit St. James. So these are areas that, with uh, input, what, what kind of retail spaces do you want to see? What kind of businesses, what kind of services does Smithtown folks want to see in their downtown areas? How do we attract them? I think that becomes part of the comprehensive master plan. But do we want us to become a patchog? Because I know patchog is revitalized, and I like going there. Yeah. Don't know if I want it in my town. Right. No, we but want maybe to be people Smithtown. Do, we want to be Smithtown. We want to hear from Smithtown people. What would you like to see? How much development would you like to see? I agree with you. We don't want to be patch up. We want to be Smithtown. And we need the character of Smithtown and what the residents are looking for as a combination of businesses, combination of you know retail spaces. What do you want to see there? And we I have great restaurants. Yeah, yeah. You we, know, we really have some great, and we have some great you know nightclubs, you know bars. But we, and we can yeah. highlight them, enhance them. I think they'd be highlighted and enhanced if we at least swept the streets and kept up with code. I know there's code that you know has to do with cleaning off the front of your of their businesses, and uh, it doesn't seem to be enforced. So walking around downtown to Midtown or walking around St. James, it's kind of a little dingy. Right, right. Kings Park. We we're only down to two minutes, and I have a lot more stuff because you had so oh. many, so many things you want to talk <laughs> so about. Issues. So I'm gonna try to speed up a little bit. Let's <laughs> talk about uh, taxes, which is a big issue for everybody. Right. So. Um, uh, in Smithtown, we have great, great uh, benefits and, and services. So they, I think we all need to like just review them, where the money's going, what's the most efficient way to use our, uh, our, our tax dollars, and that could be reviewed, and, and then even express that in our, in our you know, on, online or you know, however we reach out to the community. And then one of the, the other things I was reading when I was reading your papers, and you mentioned the Oasis, and I'm thinking, Where's the, what's, what's the Oasis? Like Smithtown is an Oasis? And, and then I read further and you were talking about the Oasis Strip Club, which I don't know how I know because I pass the thing all the time. Everybody you know, And I'm like, knows. who goes yeah, to the Oasis? I'm I like, know. people must go because it, it's been yeah. there forever. But that's a strip club that we have like practically right in the center of our town in the most beautiful spot I know in it. our town where the river comes down I and know. all the kids take their canoe trips and right. they that's paddle right. right by the Oasis Strip Club. And everybody, <laughs> everybody can joke about it. Or everybody, everybody seems to know the Oasis Strip Club. I mean, it's... It, you know, it burned once. There was a car accident there. I just thought to myself, oh, at that point, uh, Pat Vecchio is going to get rid of it. We don't. He wouldn't, you know, allow them to have another permit. Well, it still goes on and on and on. And it's not a joke. It's you know, it's a it's a bad you know moral problem that you know it just it just. It, and most times these things are in uh, industrial areas. Right. We don't need it right in the middle. Of, you know, right right at the Nissaquag County Park. Right across and, from the bull. And the bull. <laughs> Whisper the bull. The bull that represents Smithtown and Suffolk. County is directly, you could, you could look at the oasis right through the legs of <laughs> the ball. Right, right. I'd like to see it gone. Yeah, okay, so you want that gone. You're on the record of saying you want the oasis. Yes. And then uh, I'm going to just skip down to one more last issue because I know this was something that you wanted to talk about was uh, women. And we, I know we have women on the board now, which is a great thing. And But it sort of goes back to the same thing. Should they be all Republicans? Should they be all conservatives? Should they be all party hacks? And the thing, no, there should be diversity. Right. So it's nice that we do have diversity, that we have uh, women on the board. But you had mentioned, but Gary, we don't have any women as head of departments. Right. So I think that there could be, you know, clearly uh, w women that move into position that could be appointed.
appointed to the heads of department, we have less of that. It's it's uh, it's it's guys that are running uh, the departments in Smithtown. So I would like to see more than uh, the the women on the town board, and I, I I'm glad of it. I, I appreciate seeing that. It's interesting and obvious. But the rest of the t the rest of the uh, leadership or those in charge are are, are male. Great. Amy Fortunato, thank you so much oh, for coming on the you. show. Great I'm to have to you. you. Uh, good luck in the election. Where can people who are watching, if they want to get involved oh. in your campaign, where can they uh, where can they get you? www.amyforsmithtown.com, and I have a Facebook page, and I like everybody. <laughs> okay, so, uh, no, you accept their friendship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Amy Fortunato, you see that you see her name on the bottom of the screen there. If you want to get involved, send her uh, a Facebook message. I'm Gary Jacobs. Thank you for joining us on Long Island Backstory. We'll see you next time. Next week. Long Island Backstory is made possible in part by Americans for Legal Reform, the oldest, most successful legal group in the world. P.O. Box 2679, Huntington Station, New York 11746. Telephone 631-421-6390. Website, Americans, the number four, legalreform.com. I tried Oxy at a couple of parties. I didn't know it'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. <sighs> Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. They gave me Vicodin after my knee surgery. They kept prescribing it, so I kept taking it. I didn't know it would be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. <laughs> Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. I don't remember how it started. Our back and forth. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Dad! Okay, here we go, throw it! <laughs> yeah. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. 
Nice. Red hat. Oops. <laughs> Red shirt, blue shirt, <laughs> yellow shirt, oops. <laughs> yellow pants, red pants, green pants, oops. <laughs>